here is kind of an interesting example of how to work with complex fractions. And there's indeed quite a few ways in which you could solve a problem like this, but let me show you the way I like to do it. I'm going to look at this separately and leave the minus one there untouched for now. So I'm going to look at this fraction right there, and that is indeed what we would call a complex fraction. Now the numerator of this fraction, there's no fraction there, but there's a single fraction there, and there is a single denominator there. Denominator is x. So what I'm thinking about is, for this complex fraction right here, there's one fraction that has a denominator x, and I call that the lowest common denominator. So my LCD is indeed equal to x. I'm going to multiply the numerator and the denominator by x and see what we get. So this is equal to 2x divided by 3 minus 1 over x. I'm going to take the numerator, multiply times x, and I'm going to take the denominator and multiply times x. And I still have the minus 1 there that I leave untouched for now. Okay, if I do that, I get 2x times x, which is 2x squared, divided by x times 3, which is 3x, and a minus 1 over x times x, the x's cancel out, and I'm left with a minus 1, and then I have a minus 1 there. All right, so now what I've done is I've reduced the left side a little bit, and now it kind of becomes a little bit like uh, adding and subtracting um, rational expressions. And in order to do that, I must have a common denominator. And since this has the denominator 3x minus 1, and this one does not, I can then see that the LCD in this case, if I write this as 1 over 1, LCD then becomes 3x minus 1, which means that in order to subtract these two, I have to have a 3x minus 1 here, just like I have over there. So I'm going to multiply the denominator by 3x minus 1, and of course I must also multiply the numerator by that. So this now becomes 2x squared divided by 3x minus 1 minus 1 over 1. I must multiply the denominator by 3x minus 1 so that the denominators become common. And of course, I must do the same with the numerator. All right, so now I can go ahead and since the two denominators are the same, 1 times 3x minus 1 is 3x minus 1, uh, I can now write the whole thing over a single denominator of 3x minus 1. And here I still have the 2x squared, and here I have the minus the quantity 3x minus 1. I like to write it like that so I don't make any mistakes on the signs. Now I can go ahead and apply the negative sign to these. So this becomes 2x squared minus 3x plus 1 divided by 3x minus 1. And I think I'm done, unless the numerator is factorable. If it's factorable, they would like you to factor that. And to see if we can factor that, let's bring that numerator to the side here. So we have 2x squared minus 3x plus 1. And the best technique is to spread these two out, 2x squared plus 1, and leave room to write the middle term as the sum of two middle terms. The coefficients of those two, two middle terms can be found by saying that the sum must equal negative 3. And the product of those two numbers, the two coefficients of the two middle terms, must equal the product of the outer two coefficients, which is 2. So is there a, um, a pair of numbers so that when you add them, you get negative 3, and when you multiply them, you get 2? So to get 2, you can only multiply 2 times 1. And, uh, well, a matter of fact, if it's a minus 2 and a minus 1, if I add them together, I get minus 3. So minus 2 times minus 1 is equal to positive 2, and minus 2 plus a minus 1 is equal to negative 3. So that seems to work, and I can write this then as uh, a minus 2x and a minus x. So the next step is to go ahead, pair them up in groups of 2, and factor out a common factor. So I can factor out a 2x from the first two, which leaves me with an x minus 1. And if I factor out a minus 1 here, I get an x minus 1 as well. And then you can see when you look at this term and this term, they both have an x minus 1 in them. I can therefore factor out the x minus 1. And then I'm left with a 2x minus 1. So the numerator can then be written as, and let me move over here with a little bit more room, can then be written as an x minus 1 times 2x minus 1, all divided by 3x minus 1, and that would then be the simplest form 
of that initial fraction. Hmm, simplest form? Yeah, it is because it's all written in terms of products and, and uh, quotients of binomials, and that's the way we like to write those. Okay, so that's how I recommend you do one of these types of problems. Go ahead and try these now on your own, and if you still get stuck, take another look and see how these were done. Good luck!